let me show you a really interesting tool that's called SFTP Cloud that could benefit your business. Now, what it does, it can let you manage your cloud storages that are really complicated into something really easy with SFTP. Now, right now, there's a deal going on that starts off at $39 for the lifetime deal. That means you pay once and use it forever. And I think it's pretty interesting. Now, what the offer for the license tier one is these features included, which is FTP protocol, the FTPS, webhooks in case you want to get notified when someone uploads downloads or does something with that ftp because it lets you manage users and create users to let other team members use that cloud storage so those are things you don't get normally with cloudflare storage with aws etc um, email notification s3 access custom domain in case you don't want to use your own domain and static ip now license tier one which is 39 dollars gets you 200 gigabytes of storage now this is not where it interests me because they actually do provide a storage what interests me is using my other cloud storages like wasabi and you get five users with this now this is one of the limitations that you're going to hit once you start using this because each time that you connect one of the storages it automatically creates one user so if you plan to add more than five storages then you're eating up your users and in case you want to add more users well that's going to limit you so you will need to jump into license tier two or if you want don't want to have that limit jump into license tier three which is unlimited users now how easy is it to use sftps cloud well it is actually super easy once you connect your cloud storages now the cloud storages that they have available as of this video are these right now so first off you can select two of these instances which is central europe so if you're located over there or your storage is located in that section use this if not use united states and then name your in instance i'll just say test for video and then you select your instance storage. Now, like I said, the deal includes storage from SFTPS Cloud. So if you wanna use that, go ahead and select this. And you don't have to do any setup, it's super easy. But you have all these options available. AWS, which is super popular, Wasabi, which is what I use. And trust me, using Wasabi directly is a pain in the ass. So using a Wasabi here via FTP, it makes it things super easy. And I'll show you that in a bit. There's iDrive, DigitalOcean, Blackblaze, Cloudflare R2, Azure, and Cloud Google Cloud Storage. Okay, so once you create one of these, I'll create one of them from the SFTP Cloud. Like I said, it's gonna generate one user automatically and it's launching as we speak. So once this is generated, it should turn green in a bit. We're gonna get the users if I wanna add a user to this so, so someone can use the storage with limitations that I said if I want, okay? Now, I'm gonna open up one of the ones I have already available, which is this one right here. I have connected my Wasabi already but this is one of the ones I created, okay? You're gonna have basic information, so activity connections, use storage, the users, reason, event, you have the users. Now in the users is where you're going to get the information to connect your FTPS. So let's go ahead and select one of these users that's created by default, and we're gonna go into connection details, and these are the details to connect via SFTPS via SFTP or FTPS, all right? Now, this can be used in things like, for example, FileZilla or DuckGo. Here we go, this is what I'm using, CyberDuck. And you see I'm connected to my Wasabi system. All I have to do is go into Open Connection, select SFTP, and I'll add my information that's provided by SFTPS Cloud. So it's straightforward, okay? This is your host, which is what I add here in the server. We have it automatically adds a URL, the username, the password, and we're good to go to connect. Now I'm already connected and I've uploaded an image to my Wasabi. Now doing this in Wasabi, it's super complex. I mean, you gotta go log in there and you don't wanna do that every single time you wanna upload something. So this makes things super easy. Or let's just say that you're using uh, something, a, a SaaS that can connect via FTP, but it can't connect to Wasabi. So this could be like that little bridge to connect to your Wasabi account or Cloudflare or AWS, etc. So that's how you connect, super easy. You can set permissions to this. For example, if I wanna set a permission for this, by default, it's set to all, but you have all these available options to set permissions. You have your quotas. Here we go, if you wanna set a max storage and a max number of files. So let's just say you don't wanna hit a limit from your cloud storage, let's say um, two gigabytes, well, you set it here. The max number of files, you can set it here. And then you also have the public, key, public keys if you wanna set that up. Now that's for the connection. So once this is created, you have the users. You can create more users here, but remember it's gonna eat up from your license tier. If you have unlimited, well, you don't care how many users you create. Now be aware that each user you create is that someone that has access to it, right? Now there's a file manager for this 
specific um, connection that I have here. This is from the cloud from SFTP uh, cloud. And you can see here, I've uploaded one image. You can go ahead and view it. Now, the file manager is pretty basic right now. They don't have uploads. You don't have downloads from here. You can just view the information. You can rename it, open it, or delete it. And by open, it means it gives you data for it. So it doesn't mean you can edit anything or view the image or a file or a PDF. Now, that would be something interesting that they could add later on. And then you have the event list listener. This is really important because you can set alerts when someone does something. So I can call this test and there are the events to listen. So in the events to listen, I can say, you know what? When someone uploads something, I want to get notified. And the notifications can be email or webhooks. With webhooks, obviously you can do anything with it. You can connect it via Zapier, Pally Connect, Make, etc. So you can get alerted for uploads, first upload, download, first download, etc. You can also set filters for this so you don't get alerted for every single thing. And it can be set to path or username. So a specific username, if it does this, any of these, if we upload a file, then I can get a notification. And if it contains, for example, in the name, something like, I don't know, exe or virus, etc., you can just trigger that notification does not contain starts with ends with etc these are just filters and then you have your action which i've mentioned it can be an email or it can be a webhook so it's as easy as that to create an event listener these are things that you don't have in cloudflare you don't have it in wasabi aws etc and you can have it via this system so that's what makes it super interesting now like i said it's super easy to connect and obviously once you have this ready to go, like the one I've just created right now, it creates the username right away. So I think this deal for this price point, I think it's totally worth it. I wouldn't get too hanged up on this cloud storage because it's basically it's not a lot and it's kind of like a like an extra. I would use this mainly for the cloud storages you have already. Like in my case, I use Wasabi and this gives me a really easy way to use it via FTP with this system. So now I can connect via FileZilla.go or other type of systems like a SaaS that can connect via FTP or FTPS, etc. using the system. So consider it. I think it's a really useful tool that could benefit you and your business. So there you go. If you want to grab it, there's a link in the description and that's a wrap.